Hello YouTube, Jerry here. Uh, I went to visit Gene Winfield over at his shop and uh, with that visit uh, that gave me the impetus to uh, to make this video. Uh, he had a project to do, uh, 1950 Mercury patch panel for the uh, front fender and as we were making that uh, patch panel uh, it came apparent that he didn't have a set of dies for the machine that I had made for him uh, that would turn one of the edges. Uh, so we'll get into that in the in the next video. Uh, so what I want to get into with this particular video is the radius turning tool that I'll be using uh, in the next couple of videos. Uh, this tool uh, I made back quite a while ago uh, for making some uh, dies for my bead roller to do some quick kick plates uh, and that particular video has gotten quite a number of views so uh, I'm going to show you the the bead roller or no the uh, radius turning tool that I made and I also have a set of plans and a 26 minute uh, DVD that goes along with it uh, and it, it's quite thorough. Uh, it steps you through uh, all, all of the things that are necessary to get a good sturdy uh, radius turning or ball turning tool. So let me walk you through some of the finer points uh, that I feel make my uh, radius turning tool a little more uh, usable, uh, a little more unique than the rest of them that you see uh, on YouTube here. The first thing that you'll notice is the length of the handle. Uh, this thing is quite long, I understand. Most of them have a very short handle. Uh, it doesn't allow you to move the, the tool bit in a, in a constant manner. Uh, by having a, a handle that's this long, you move this just a couple of degrees and your tool bit is moving in a, a typical amount. If you have it up short, you're fighting the resistance of the cut. So uh, especially on your last couple of cuts, by having a longer handle, that cut is going to be just as smooth as can be. And then here, starting uh, right from the top, the tool bits that I'm using, uh, quite a while back I bought a pallet from a machinery auction and got these five tool bits and so that's what I decided to use. Uh, the, uh, this one here is used for turning convexed shapes, turning a ball. This one is used for cutting concaved shapes. And this one, the longer one, is for turning much larger convex shapes. I can come all the way out to the center line of the tool and this gives me a three inch radius. I think if anything that I would change on making this would be to 
change uh, to the same insert that I have for my lathe. Uh, one thing I did, well these have a, a rake on them and that helps to cut quite a bit. Uh, if you'll notice on this one and on this one I took my diamond wheel and ground a uh, taper on there and it comes out right to, I had to be very careful and exit that taper right on the cutting edge. That took quite a while because I had to be so uh, precise with the grinding. For the tool holders, uh, I had a bunch of three-quarter by one stainless steel. Uh, so that's just what I used. The On the one for the concave cuts, uh, I wasn't concerned with this area here because the cutter would be out past uh, the body of the uh, the rotating portion of the uh, of the tool but with these other two that are used for the uh, convexed cuts uh, this would be make making a ball uh, the distance from the top of this I had to have the top of the tool bit high enough to make my uh, Radio or tools for the bead roller. That's how I arrived at that height. The body of the radius tool is just made out of three inch round 4130. Uh, I'll show you what these four holes are for in just a moment. Uh, this hole here goes all the way through to the bottom of this block and then there's a groove cut to center so I can oil all underneath uh, this piece that's why it moves so smoothly and it also passes through the bolt that holds this whole thing together all I used was a half inch by half inch shoulder bolt and I had to make this spacer and then some very thin shims to make sure that it was very tight there's no movement in this handle at all uh, this is right down snug this plate is just a piece of stainless steel uh, that I got in an auction uh, and it just happened to be the right size for what I wanted to do. And what makes this tool uh, unique and much better than anything else you'll see here on YouTube is this one little piece of aluminum angle iron and these two little screws just hold this in place with these two little allen screws and this surface here is right on the center line then I can take my tool holder put it in there if I want to be at three quarter of an inch I just put the calipers in there bring that tool bit right up against it tighten all five of the holding screws and I know that I'm right exactly on three quarter of an inch and that would be for making a ball or a convexed cut if you want to make a precise uh, concaved cut 
Just put your tool holder in there, tighten that up, put that little piece of angle iron in there, This edge is squared to the workpiece and it's still right on the uh, center line here. Pull that back. Set your square up against the angle iron. Pull this forward until it touches. Tighten it down. And once again, you're right on the distance, the radius that you're wanting to cut. So that's about it. Uh, if you'd like to see this tool in action, uh, go to the next video. And I'll be making both a concave and convexed uh, cuts with it. And I might even add uh, the heat treating. Uh, we'll find out at a later date if I decide to do that. Uh, if you want the plans with the DVD, uh, you can look in the description below uh, for my website. Uh, once you get on the website, go to plans and DVDs and you'll see it there. Thank you very much for watching. See you later.